Hey guys, in this lecture, what I'd like to do is go over the theory of SMAW. Now, SMAW it stands for Shielded Metal Arc Welding. I'm probably going to refer to it a lot more as stick. Stick is more of a slang name. So throughout this lecture and even into other lectures, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So what my goal for the video is, is to just kind of give you a broad sense of what's happening. Everything from the electricity, what the, where, how the rod fits in there, how to strike the arc, things like that. And I'm just going to talk about it and I'm going to be demonstrating it in later videos. Now, stick welding was invented around the turn of the century. The reason I say it was around the turn of the century is because there's about seven different people, including who invented the electrode, who invented the holder, who invented the welder. And I'm not really going to get into that in this video. But what I'd like to do is now get down on the table and I'm going to show you how everything fits together. All right, so now that we're on the table, I want to point out a few things. What I got here, we got our ground clamp. We can't do any welding without completing a circuit. So we're going to have our, our stick electrode holder. We're going to have our stick, our table, or our base metal, and a ground clamp to make that connection all the way through. We're going to take our ground clamp. We're going to attach it to the table. If at any time you have any contaminants or anything that's uh, insulating that table, such as paint, um, heavy dirt, heavy rust, we got to make sure we grind that off so that way we can get a good, uh, good connection through that ground clamp. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that over here just out of the way. And we're going to talk a little bit about the stick and the electrode holder. Now the electrode holder has multiple places that we can set this stick. We can set it at a 45 up, 45 down. We can set it at a 90 degree. We can set it also straight up if you were welding something like overhead. So what's going to happen is we're going to put the stick electrode. I'm, when I first start out and I'm doing stringer beads, I'm going to probably set it up like this and I'm going to show you how, how I do it this way. What's going to happen is you're going to actually touch the metal and pull that stick electrode away. And what happened is you made a connection on that base metal and when you pull away you're going to have an arc. Now this arc is going to go ahead and start burning that rod away with all those electrons traveling through that stick it's going to start getting super heated and that's what's going to give you that weld puddle. This is a bird's eye view of me using a stick electrode welding on a T-joint. Now I want to mainly point out that you can kind of see that arc happening in there. It's, it's really difficult to see even when you have your welding hood on. But you can see the stick is coming in. I've got my puddle and it's this right here. Most of welding is actually paying attention to this puddle. More like the outside of the puddle. And we're just trying to maintain a specific size so that way we can have a nice consistent weld all the way down this plate. While it's welding, the flux covering on the outside of your stick is going to be burning off and creating a gaseous cloud that's going to kind of shield that whole weld puddle. And that's where that shielded metal arc comes from. The shielding is that shielding gas. So we're going we're gonna to touch it, pull it off, we're going to have that arc, it's going to stabilize and then it's going to start depositing that metal. Now the reason the metal doesn't go up or all over the place is because the electricity moving through this stick electrode is actually got a polarity to it. Now, I'm gonna introduce a few terms to you, and those are DCEN and DCEP. So DCEN stands for direct current electrode negative. DCEP stands for direct current electrode positive. So continuing on with our direct current discussion. If we had a positive pole right over here and a negative pole, the electricity would flow from the positive to the negative and it would look kind of like this but it would actually be electricity in that line. If we were able to flip that polarity and had a positive pole over here and a negative pole over here, the electricity would travel from the positive over to here. So what I'm going to explain here in a second is if our electrode holder is positive and our ground clamp is negative, we're always going to have those electrons flowing in that direction. But we can easily flip it by either taking and unhooking those and swapping the leads or sometimes there is a switch on some welders that can just instantly do that. So for AC, it's going to go back and forth over and over about 60 times a second. So you're not even going to notice this. It's not going to change the arc a lot as far as going on and off or anything like that. It's just going to be switching there for you. So let's go ahead and get back out in the shop. So now depending on which way we have it set up because we could have this be the positive pole or we could have this be the positive pole. 
that's going to determine which direction that electricity is traveling. So I've got my stick electrode in here and I've got it, I've got it touched off, I've got a weld going. The electricity is traveling from this stick holder back to the ground. So that means that all the electrons are flowing into the table. So that means there's a thing called arc force. That arc force is actually pushing all that weld metal down onto the plate. That's what also gives us the ability to weld vertical up overhead and without it having, you know, if it's vertical or overhead, that potentially could fall out or fall on top of us. But the arc force is what keeps it going up in there. Now let's talk a little bit more about the direct current electrode positive and electrode negative. And I'm just gonna probably refer to those as electrode positive and electrode negative. That way I don't have to keep saying the DC part. Just kinda, it's a little bit more to think about and I get confused easy. So what happens is we have our stick electrode up here and it's all, it's all running, but this is our positive pole, right? And it's going positive to negative. So you might be wondering why would you need electrode positive and why would you need electrode negative? Well, if we're welding, what happens is, remember, those electrons are flowing into the ground clamp over here. So what's happening is all of the heat and all of the penetration is going into our plate. So this is with electrode positive, and it's going to create a much better penetration. Now, if we switch the polarity, and all of a sudden this is the negative pole and this one's the positive, the electrons are now flowing the opposite direction. The reason we might want to do that is if we're welding with a thinner gauge metal, we want more heat being put onto our, our welding rod and less being put into the metal. Also, if we're welding with a, a larger size welding rod, it'll help burn that off. Speaking about welding on a thinner gauge metal, stick welding is very useful because it can go all the way from eighth inch up to a few feet thick. Sometimes you have to bevel back the plates and do some other prep work if you want to do some of those thicker welds, but it has the capability. Now, AC, AC is kind of this middle of the road. It's going to be constantly moving back and forth. So it's going to put the heat on the plate, it's going to put the heat on the stick, and just work back and forth. This is very useful if you have to work in areas that have, are polarity sensitive. Also, if you're working with a, a big rod, but you still want to have good penetration, you just got to make sure you look at the rod specifications and see if it's capable of welding with AC. Now, I would say the most popular welding voltage that we're going to be using is going to be our DC electrode positive. So just know that like things like 7018, 6010, they can all be run on this. If you start branching out into other stuff, you're going to need to change up that, that current. So that concludes the class on SMAW theory. If you guys got any questions, we brought up a lot of new topics. Please come ask me and we can go over it.